Long time viewers of this channel will notice that I really like DROs. I even added them to my XY table on my drill press. I've even got one on my quill and then I can drill or counterbore down to a set depth. And I've also got them on the CNC machine which comes in handy if you want to do a bit of manual machining. I've even added them to the vise so I can see the position of my jaws. And of course I've got digital readouts on the lathe as well. And then recently I added this electronic lead screw project. This is the one from Cloud42. I'll leave a link to my build series down below. So as you can see I don't yet have a digital readout on my tailstock. So why would you want one of those? Well if you're drilling or counterboring to a certain depth that can be pretty handy. Now they do have these gradations on here, millimetres and inches, so you touch off the work, note down the value and then add on the amount you want to bore it or drill it out to and then stop at that new value. You know, it is doable, but this is the modern age. Could it be improved? Let's find out. Tailstock digital readout project has been on my list for quite a long time. You know, there's loads of them out there, there's nothing new here. You're basically adapting uh, some kind of digital readout so that one part moves, one part stays still, and then you can just measure the position of the tailstock as it moves in and out. You know, there's loads of designs on the internet, uh, lots of DIY versions and so on, and I was going to make my own. But then one of my viewers made a comment, they basically said, Had you seen these Lin Tools digital readouts for the tailstock? To be fair, I'd not heard of them and I'd not seen them. So I had a look at their eBay store and yeah, I was quite taken by them. So since I was reviewing this product, I thought I'd have a look and see what the company was all about. So it's a company called Lin Tools and it turns out it's a UK based company. It's a startup. Um, there's a couple of guys running it at the moment and essentially uh, what they're all about is developing these little niche, little clever products, uh, these little devices that fill in these different needs in the market. Yeah, and they're quite inventive and I thought they're quite neat. So they've got a few hand tools here, so these little allen key wrenches with changeable ends. Uh, they've got these woodworking tools, so they've got this kind of track system. So if, so if you've got the track already, which has a kind of saw that runs along it, like a plunge saw, uh, you can use this guide base and then buy this adapter, it looks like, to convert it to adapt to a little handheld router there. That one's a Makita, and they've got the uh, DeWalt one there as well. So that kind of thing. Um, so quite a few neat little products. Um, they also had these little uh, yeah, DTIs that clamp to the lathe bed, and then there was another one, uh, which was yeah, this measuring the position of the carriage. Now I've got digital readouts on both my axes, so I don't need that, um, but that might be an option for some people, and they've got those to fit a range of different lathes. But what first drew me to this company was, well, first of all, somebody uh, pointed out in the comments, so thank you very much for that. Um, have you tried these LIN tools for the digital readout on the on the tailstock and uh, no I'd not heard them before not seen them so I had a little look and this is the sort of thing they do so they've got this one that goes on the Colchester Bantam this one on the Master this one on the Grizzly so I know it's quite a popular option in the States uh, I've got this Warco WM250 mine's a 250V but that just means a variable speed drive the tailstock is the same so I've got one to fit there one for Precision Matthews as uh, South Bend there another Grizzly there and some of the gearhead lathes that Warco make. So it's so a range of different products but essentially doing the same thing and allowing you to, uh, allow you to digitally or read out where the position of the tailstock is. So I sent an email to them and basically said would you like me to review your product and they said yeah great no problem. Uh, no strings attached they just sent me the product um, so let's have a look and see what we got. And it arrived like this, it's nicely branded, they've got their own little stamps there on the paper and on the box. And uh, let's open it up and see what we've got. So it looks like it comes with a battery. We've got the little DRO system itself. Now it looks like, yeah, that I guess is the toggle for the quick release. And I think it had some magnets. There's a few, yeah, two magnets down there. Now, you gotta be careful with magnets in the machine shop, they can get a lot of swarf on them, but you know, once it's on, maybe that's okay. Let's have a look. So we'll cut this open, get the battery in, and see what we've got. Okay, I'll eat that later. 
instructions. Do we open them? Let's have a look, see what we got first. A bit of wax paper, I guess, to protect something. Not sure. And some kind of bracket. Looks like the end of a digital caliper. Oh, okay. I guess that goes on there. Or maybe it used to. Because it looks like a converted caliper. All right, come back to that. And then one of those. I think that's the key to wind it up. No, nope, maybe not. Okay. All right. And it's reading. So, zoom. Maybe put that end stop on there and stop that coming off. Right, zero it. Yeah, I guess given these are, uh, I assume that's 3D printed. It's come back pretty close. Clearly it's a converted from a, a caliper and it looks like the type where I guess you'd, you'd bolt it on at both ends to something like that and then this would go on to whatever you were reading, so maybe depth on a quill or something like that. And then it looks like obviously the 3D printed this bit here, it's quite nice, it's got the curve there, it's got the magnets embedded in. I don't know if they're glued in, pressed in or whether when they did the print they stopped the print, put them in and they're kind of encapsulated, looks like probably pressed, I guess. Uh, and then at the other end, uh, quite nicely made, it's kind of a an over center lock system. So obviously you can get that onto the moving part of the quill. And then, how would that, oh, that would go in there. And then you tighten up that. Again, that looks 3D printed, I guess. You've got some uh, nice grippy texture on it. Well, I guess if you want, you could customise that to something, a nice knurled aluminium one or whatever. But anyway, that's what you get in there. And then I've got their branding on there. Actually, that's interesting because they've got this branded here. So I assume this was a generic Chinese uh, sort of digital readout. But either they've either reprinted this insert or they've had them custom made just for them so I'm not sure which but oh yeah probably custom made because that's got the uh, their name on there as well um, so it just leaves me to wonder what to ah, ah. okay so I was struggling with the battery cover earlier that's clearly for that okay you will edit that bit out early won't you where I was fiddling to get the battery lid on yeah don't worry about it I know just what to do all right, cheers man, thanks for that. Right, so I think the only thing left to do is go and offer it up to the lathe and see how it fits. So I'll see you over there. Okay, so each of these tailstock DROs is custom made to fit a particular machine or range of machines. So in my case, this is my Warco WM250V. And so this should fit straight onto the tailstock there. So here it is. So I guess that's nice and clean. The magnets will go on there and that will go around there. Yeah, that's on and then clamp that on now. One of the things I was thinking a minute ago is obviously this this will go all the way back so I won't clamp that on yet until it wants to eject the tool so I need to make sure that this doesn't bottom out first so, oh, in fact oh, somewhere there Gonna 
leave it. Oh yeah, it's still got some grip on it. And then we'll go forward. Actually, I just realised something. We can rotate this, can't we? Because I can't really see that. Maybe somewhere there. I'll make sure I can still operate that. Okay, so about there. It's kind of half on, half off, so I don't want to go any further. And get that seated. As yeah, so you may be able to see in there, it's just a couple of mil over the edge there, just to make sure I can definitely bring this back far enough to eject the tool. But it's got a reasonable grip, and then that's going to clear. I mean, to be honest, you only use it in that range anyway, so what I'm tempted to do is just loosen this and swing it around a bit because the display is kind of horizontal, and I, I probably really want it at that angle. Take a move. Here we go, maybe something like that. Let's just see. That's loose, tight, loose, tight. Yeah, maybe I'll put a little knurl one in there just to give a bit more clearance. Maybe. <laughs> I can't stop messing with stuff. Can, I, can it be improved? Well, yeah, it can be improved. All right, so that looks, that looks all right. So, well, let's uh, move it in now and see what happens. Ah, the other thing I want to check is um, how much stroke I've got on here until it runs out of thread. And then will this end come out the end of here? If so, I'll have to put that end stop on. So the other black clamp on the... A bit like this one, but on the other end, just to make sure it doesn't pull all the way through. I think there won't be any problems if this comes off, but sometimes I've got like a spring-loaded contact and you might have to take it apart just to get it back on, I'm not sure. But I don't want to go there. Right, let's see how far we can move it and see if we've still got travel. I must admit, but now it's on there, it does look quite nice. It looks like it was meant to be. It's all nicely blended in and uh, we've got a reasonable colour match as well on the, on the 3D printed against the stock part. It does look like it's all been considered and all the profiles are nicely done as well so right let's um well first of all we'll go all the way back until um definitely feels like it's going to stop and make sure we've still got a little bit of clearance there so about there yeah so it's about three or four mil that's enough to uh, eject the tool and uh, right, we'll go all the way forwards let's see how far we can go but hang on to it in case it falls out i don't want to break it I think we've got about 80. Oh, there we go. Oh, easy, yeah. So that's that's come out of the thread 60, 65 mil, and there's loads to go. So I'll probably leave it like that. I'll probably not put the end stop on. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be all right. And uh, let's get it back engaged again. All right. Again, we'll just double check we can eject the tool. Oh yeah, with a couple of mil to spare, so that's fine. That gives you another shot of what I was talking about. So it's just overhanging a little bit, but there's still plenty of width on there to grab that. And it's only lightly loaded just to move the DRO, so that's not a problem. I guess if you made that any thinner, then some of these plastics might get a bit on the thin side just for strength, because you're pulling that together. Um, but yeah, that looks really good. So I'll put the tool back in and what else should we do? I'll tell you what, let's drill a hole and uh, we can see how deep it goes. Yeah, it's going to be quite nice having that. Alright, so we've got a test piece in. We'll just face that off, make a new centre and then we'll do a test cut. It's not very round, but that doesn't matter. Now, for those of you who saw my electronic lead screw build, this will also give me a chance to try out the automatic feed uh, using the variable speed there on the cross cut. So 20 is a bit slow, or 0.2, so we'll pump that up. Or maybe not that quick, maybe somewhere there. Let's try that, and in we go.
put a spotting drill in. Trying out the principle really. Zero it. Let's go 10 mil. And you see, yeah, just about in frame. All right, there's five, six. Sure, what else I expected, but it works. Uh, let's see if we can get a measure of that. I'll just deburr the edge and we'll just drop the DTI, uh, drop the vernier, sorry, into the edge and just try and get the edge of that cone. It'll be rough. I guess I could have used uh, an end mill actually, and then we've got a flat bottom and I could have done a better measurement. But yeah, we're just trying out the idea. accurate measurement. So I'll do it down then I can't see the reading and be influenced by it. I'll start with it a bit longer. There. Okay, survey says... Oh, no way. Really? Uh, I think that was partly luck. But, you know, you get the idea. If you need more precision than that, you know, there'd be other ways to do it. You'd be um, putting some kind of uh, internal uh, boring tool in there, if I remember, the, remember my words. You put a boring tool in there and you use the DRO. But, you know, for drilling holes, um, may you want a reasonable level of accuracy. Pretty please. Does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? All right. So overall then, where does that leave us? Well, you know, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, it clips on nice and easily. I guess if you wanted to, it'd be you know, a couple of seconds just to undo that and take it off again. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do that, but maybe, I guess if you've got a lathe with flood coolant, and this is probably not waterproof, although what did it say on there? IP54. I'll have to look at what that is. That's probably splash resistant. Anyway, there might be a reason why you want to take that off, I guess. Um, Maybe you're turning something big, I don't know. But um, I think um, I'm more, like, more than likely just to keep that on all the time. I think because that part, I mean, the only negative, I guess, really is uh, on this lathe, where this uh, the tightening piece ends up to hold this, uh, the tailstock in, you know, that's loose and tight, so that's all fine, but just a little bit close to that knob. I don't know if this unscrews all the way. Maybe I'll just put a cap head in there, you know, because once, once it's on, I'll probably keep it on, and that'll keep that right out of the way. Um, but you know you've got the option of keeping that if you want to take it on and off quickly uh, yeah I mean it's it just it just looks considered and nicely made other than, other than that and um, oh yeah there was the only other thing was just um, to give me enough room to eject the tool I've had to just overhang it ever slightly a couple of mil but as you can see that's probably 12 14 mil wide so there's plenty of area to grip on not a big deal um, and other than that yeah uh, it's a nice little unit yeah, like it. Oh, go on then, while we're here, let's have a look and see what we've got. So, I don't know if the whole thread will come out or just the handle. Oh, the thread's stationary, so maybe it's been, uh, uh, it's 
been printed within or feels tight in there. It's not locked in, is it? No. Mm. Or maybe it's screwed in, it's just been Loctited, I don't know. Okay, either way, I guess you could still, if you want to make it super low profile and didn't want to take it on and off. Uh, yeah, I could do a little knurled fat. If I only had a little bit of aluminium spare, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, when you've drilled it oversized now. Yeah, maybe you'd make something there or just put a little uh, nylock nut on that or something like that. But anyway. Well, maybe this negative is actually a positive. You can customise it and you can improve it and make it your own. I think we'll put this back on for now and just show you it as it was shipped and as it's intended. And, uh, and then I think we'll wrap up. So where's that lever sent? Well... It is really nicely made. Um, I think it's nicely considered the way the colours are matched and the way it just sort of everything's functional. It's nicely machined back uh, or cut away where it needs to. Um, Customisable knob, you know, to suit your own application. That's a bonus. Uh, yeah, and uh, it just works. Um, I think I got a bit lucky with that depth. You know, it really depends on by eye where I'd started on the full diameter. Uh, there'd be other ways to do it as well, but that's just a quick way just to get a little bit of a feel for it. So I think we have to talk about costs. So this little unit comes in around £58. Well, that's the website price at the moment. So you just have to check back there uh, if you're watching this sometime in the future. You are For that, you're getting uh, this custom-made digital readout. You're getting all these printed out parts. You know, it's all time and money. Uh, the little magnets assembling it all. The threads, the hardware, a little knob down here. You know, and just packaging it out. And just the general cost of running a business. So... If you want something that's just sort of fit and forget, uh, this sort of works. Oh, it's gone off, there we go. <laughs> it's got auto power off as well, because I've been waffling for too long. Um, then, you know, by all means, this is a, a really nice option. I can't really see any downsides to it uh, with the short time I've had it. Um, yeah, apart from, yeah, a customizable knob, but looks really good. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you thought it was balanced. I did my best to show all the pros and cons. If you've bought one of these, by all means, put your comments in the, uh, in the description down below. And all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and see you next time. You just had to fiddle with it, didn't you? Oh, I thought you'd gone home. I never go home. <laughs>